The number two shovel, so classic, so mean. You can dig a foxhole, you can dig a latrine. It rides on the side in a neat little bracket. I'll bet if you tried your Jeep, you could jack it. Along with this shovel created with such thought and such wit, around here I use it for shuffling stuff. <laughs>so I'm not going to give any rap record deals and I'm not going to give any people commission me to write books of poetry, but I, I thought it was funny. In this video, I want to dedicate it to the Ford Motor Company because Lord knows I love those Ford GPWs. I'm telling you, Scott's on something in this video. Anyways, I am Scott Schiller from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and Team G503. And in this video, I will be showing you how to mount the forward bracket on the body tub of the Jeep so you can install your Pioneer tool, mainly your shovel. Check it out. I think you'll like it. We're on the driver's side here of the tub, and I do have one factory hole. All the measurements will be pulled off this seam in your axe and shovel indents. I have a drywall square here. It's a very long square and it will come in perfectly handy for this job. I'll lay it right here on the front step and I'll touch the back side to that seam and I can get my measurements off of the back side here on the square. Using a reproduction shovel front bracket from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and the number is part number A3082. This is a quality one. I've got it all primed and painted up. And what I'm going to do now is measure from center to center on the holes in the bracket and the measurement is 6 and 5 8 inches. See from the measurement on my square that it looks like the center of that hole is 19 inches. But I'm going to go ahead and just double check with my tape and I'll put the tape right in the center of the original factory hole and I'll measure out to the back side and indeed it is 19 inches. Coming down from the top side here, the measurement in the center of the hole looks to be about 3 and a half inches off of this flat side of the step as shown here where my tape is. I'm going to remove the drywall square and bring out my carpenter square. These are a little bit more common than drywall squares. I was going to use the drywall square to ride this back and forth on, but I might as well show you how you could do this also with just a regular framing square. The same way, set it on top of the step. This was going to be set on top of the old drywall square I had out there, but you can also set it right here on top of the step, and then you get your square measurement off the top. I'll measure from the center of the hole up the six and five eighths inches and then I'll make a small mark with a sharpie just so I can get a point of reference to drill my pilot hole. Before I do any drilling I will take the actual bracket and just line it up with the original hole that I had down there or in the case you didn't have one you could line it up with your mark and just double check that your marks are correct before you take the drill out. I'm using an eighth inch drill bit here for sheet metal and I'm just going to drill a pilot hole because the hole size for the 5 sixteenths screws that will go in there will be 3 eighths and I don't want to try to use a 3 eighths bit right off the get go and that will keep me in line also for when I do use the 3 eighths bit. I'll get out the 3 eighths bit now and I've already double checked that this fits in the hole. The actual hole in the bottom is a little bit bigger than the 3 eighths but I believe that it's been wallowed out over the years. And just go ahead and set it in the pilot hole and finish out drilling that hole to the 3 eighths size. Again, the pilot hole is going to enable you to keep that large drill bit right where it needs to be and won't bounce around on your sheet metal. We'll clean up the mess here a little bit and then we'll get out the hardware. The RFJP Shovel Bracket Hardware Kit is part number A3082K, which includes the machine screws that are special that are 5 16 18 by 5 8 It includes the lock washers, nuts, and flat washers to install your shovel forward bracket. Notice here on the bracket how there's a recessed machined area that the screw will fit perfectly into. It seats just like that. We'll go ahead and install the top screw and then reach around back and we'll install the flat washer first, the lock washer, and then the nut and we'll hand tight it just to hold it in place. Then we can go down to the lower area here. We've got a little movement and we can install the lower screw. Now this one is from the front side of the cowl and I'll show you at the end of the video exactly where the fasteners come through. Again, install the flat washer, the lock washer, and the nut. We'll go back now and tighten them up. I'm using a special screwdriver here as the slot is rather large. You want that screwdriver to fit that slot perfectly. 
I'll be using a half inch socket and ratchet to tighten the nut from the back side while holding it with the screwdriver. And that's why you want it to fit in the slot because if not, you'll wind up damaging the slot and it'll just look bad. I like to clock the screw heads, or in other words, keep them in line. That probably wouldn't have been correct from the factory. I just think it looks better during my restoration personally. We'll go down here and again, I'll show you on the end of the video where the nuts and washers are located. You can tighten this down a little bit, get it to where you want it, and then go ahead and give it a good snug in with your ratchet and make sure that those bolts are tight. Once I get all the fasteners tight, I will be using the Barrier 3 Red Oxide Primer from Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts to prime them first. I'll give them a good light two coats. If you've been following this series, you know that my intention from the beginning of this project was to paint all the bolt heads and screws and fasteners. And what I've done is I've, I've actually only put two coats on the outside of the tub, and then I'll prime everything and go back with a couple of coats in the rattle cans. And when I'm finished with all the add-ons, then I will go back one last time, scuff all the paint, and coat everything one last time with the 33070 just so I've get a uniform coat on everything. The rattle can paint matches exactly the paint that I had out of the gallon that I painted this body tub with a few months back. Going to give you a shout out here. It's finished and dried. As you see, everything came out nice. It looks very nice. It's very straight. And I'll show you those fastener locations. One's here underneath the front side in the cowl, that location. You see the flat washer, the lock washer, the nut. And I've got another little coat to go of dusting with the 33070 before that's complete. And I'll do that later. And then on the inside of the tub here, against the wall here, you can see where I've also installed the flat washer, lock washer, and nut. I'll give those another coat before we finish up today. And we're all set with the shovel bracket. Everything's all dried down. We'll cover up the tub in the project and come back another day. Want to show you lastly this paperwork from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts that comes with the kits that shows you the locations of various bolt-ons. Back to the shop for some more tomfoolery. If you'd like to subscribe to Team G503, you can follow along and see how we restore the Willis MB. Ooh. I'm telling you, man, I love these shovels and these axes. It's awesome. Uh, like I said, if you'd like to follow along what we're doing with the 1943 Willis 7 here on Team G503 on YouTube, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button and clicking that bell so you get the notifications when we post new videos. We are rolling, and I'm very happy about it. Till next time, my friends, keep it safe, and don't be shuffling too much of that stuff. See you next time.